Hi, I'm Bridget Patterson. I'm the program director for the Epilepsy Foundation of Missouri and Kansas. And today I'm joined by Mindy and Nick Rocha and their son Chris. And we're so excited to hear about their story and their journey with epilepsy. So Chris is 13 now. When he was in the third grade, he had his first seizure. He was um, sitting on the couch reading a book and his mouth started fish hooking and he got up and walked over and I said, buddy, what's wrong? And he couldn't talk. He shrugged his shoulders and he tried to take a drink to get the numbness to go away and it just spilled right back out. Hopes for Chris's future is to continue to be seizure free. Um, July will be a year. We just had a normal EEG wanting him to wake up every morning to know when I go in to make sure that, you know, I just want to know that he's okay. He has a seizure and you, you're helpless. There's nothing you can do. Epilepsy has impacted my life by just not knowing when a seizure is going to happen, whether it's going to be in public or wherever, and uh, also the anxiety of just being worried. So it impacted my school life by just having to like worry about if the teachers know what to do when it happens, if it happens, uh, and then uh, how. Um, just not being able to just do everything, kind of, like just not be able just to go anywhere without having have someone like kind of watch me or something. It's just been a part of my life for how long? Since third grade. Since third grade and um, how it's just it's there. All the time. Mm -hmm. And then what I hate about it is uh, you have to worry about it, and then you have also have to carry around a medicine for it, and you have to take medicine for it. And yeah, I'm in eighth grade. Okay, I play baseball. My hopes for the future is that I will be seizure free and be able to get off medicine, and I hope to be able to play baseball, They're like in the major leagues. I would donate to charities for about epilepsy and just talk to anyone who has it whenever I can. Uh, you know, it, it, it's impacted our family, uh, both positive, I mean, more positive than negative. You know, the negative is, is we're always worried, you know, uh, who's gonna be there, who's going to know what to do. But at the same time, you know, it's brought us together a lot more. There's no sleep before an EEG. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, as far as, you know, like with the job. <laughs> I guess, I just see how bad it could be. Yeah. And how blessed we are, it's not that bad. He's a firefighter, so he runs calls where he's seen kids not make it. And, you know, we're so See lucky. See the kids that, that, that are a lot worse. And like I said, really that we are lucky that, that it's just what it is because. And how awesome he handles it. Chris is really just a rock star at it. And Josh, our youngest, has really stepped up and you know, looks out for Big Brother if they're somewhere together. Or... So I first met Bridget when I called the Epilepsy Foundation shortly after Chris had his first seizure and I was looking for knowledge, I was looking for support, just answers. She's always there if he were to ever need anything, if we were to ever need anything, if any of his friends or faculty were ever to need anything, she's just always been there. She's a wonderful friend. Some of the services we've received from the Epilepsy Foundation of Kansas and Missouri are um, knowledge, education. Um, she's came out to his new school and educated all the faculty on seizure awareness and safety training for that. Um, and just knowledge on his medications and different, when we were transitioning from KU to Children's, just helped us through that process. Chris and I served on the Seize the Day committee. Um, he helped design a shirt and pick the color of the shirt one year. Um, 
we have attended the epilepsy galas. Um, Chris spoke at a Seize the Day um, walk one year to share his story. For those that have it, like I said, it's still normal. You're still a normal person. And it's always good to not so much as alienate, but when you have a good group of, of friends, it helps out a lot. That understand. And I watch out for you. Yeah. Chris has surrounded with a very good group of friends and they know what to do if something were to happen. My sister had a friend who had tonic clonic seizures and they all knew they were in a restaurant eating, they all knew to get her on the floor. You know, it's things like that you don't know a lot of people don't know the stairs. Steps on what to do if somebody has a seizure. That light doesn't always cause <laughs> them video games too. <laughs> that flickering lights don't always cause all seizures. 